All right, on the sidelines of B20 Summit, I am joined by a man who has literally changed how we consume steel. I am joined by Mr. TV Narendra from Tata Steel. Thank you so much for joining us, sir. Uh, sir, on the sidelines of B20 Summit, uh, I'd like to ask you how uh, bullish are you on the India story? You've always mentioned about net zero targets. Today, I would like to ask your opinion on the India story. Sure. Uh, and how well are you integrated with your company towards India's story now, sir? I think the India story has been strong for some time and it looks quite strong uh, even now. Uh, in fact, uh, I think we've handled inflation much better than many other countries. Uh, and we are seeing a recovery of rural consumption, which was a concern last year. And because India has moved now to an investment-led growth, the government spend on infrastructure has acted as a force multiplier. Uh, so in many ways, a lot of things happening which is positive. Uh, the geopolitical issues in the world is also encouraging uh, global multinationals to look at India as a source. So India has a great opportunity to be an important source and an important market, which is not an opportunity which most countries have. So I think we are well positioned. Now, sir, if, I, if I talk about Tata Steel for India's story, sir, I know it's a B20 event, but still it's my duty to ask. Uh, how has Tata Steel uh, positioned itself when it comes to uh, the India story, sir? How uh, bullish are you with respect to the prices, with respect to expansion plans? Could, could you give us some hint sure. there, sir? So if you see, even in the last uh, few years, we've doubled our uh, production in India. We moved from 10 million to 20 million. Over the next few years, we want to move from 20 to 40. We've already said that we want to be 40 million tons by 2030. And our plans are already going on. I think uh, we are in the middle of a 5 million ton expansion. By next year, we should be at 25 million tons. And we have plans for the balance 15 million. So I think uh, we are very bullish. We are putting money where our mouth is and investing hugely uh, in, the, in the India story. So I think uh, the Tata Steel commitment continues. I think... Uh, we see a great opportunity and uh, we are there to capitalize on that. Also, sir, with, with, the, with the recent acquisition of Nilanjal Ispat, sir, uh, is there any more acquisition plans do you have in picture or uh, are, you, are we happy with the two recent acquisitions and that's how you plan to grow beyond, sir? So, you know, fundamentally we believe that we need to have fewer sites but larger sites. Okay, so if I look at it with the existing sites, uh, we can clearly move to 40 to 45 million tons. We said 40 million by 2030, but beyond 2030, with the existing sites, you can go to 45 million tons. So I think uh, our growth ambition for the next few years is well taken care of. We don't really need to acquire any other facility to uh, realize our growth ambitions. So I think that's what I said. So I think existing assets allow us a growth path that we want to uh, realize. Sir, as inflation also worries, kind of, you know, little worries for India, uh, steel prices have been a little higher, sir. Are you expecting for them to cool down or do you think uh, along with other commodity prices, steel prices would also be on a rise, sir? So again, it depends on uh, what you see as a uh, good steel price or whatever. The long-term average for steel prices should be around $600, okay? So if you look at it, and uh, which is where I think steel prices will be in that $600 to $650 range. I think the uh, concern has been what is happening in China, and China has not recovered as much as people thought post-COVID. So China has been exporting more steel than they've been doing in most of the last five years, which has had an impact on steel prices globally. Good news is the demand in India has been very strong. So it's not as if Indian steel producers are sitting on much inventory. So that's why we are positive about steel prices going forward. I think the worst is behind us. If you see the input cost for steel has also started creeping up with coal prices going up. I know price is quite stable. And uh, so we expect that uh, post-monsoon leading up to the festival season and post that, the steel demand and steel prices should be quite strong. Sure. Also, last question to you, sir. Uh, with respect to uh, the, the task force, uh, what are your recommendations when it comes to the policy uh, side, sir? 54 policy decisions the chair told us yesterday. Uh, what have you recommended to, to, at your end? So what all do you feel should be done immediately so that policy implementation is the, is the most difficult part? Making sure. it is still easier, but implementing is a difficult task. So what do you have to say on that? So I was a co-chair of the Energy and Transition Task Force. Uh, so our focus was on climate change, transition, energy and resource efficiency and our recommendations uh, were more to do at a B20 level how can we make sure that the financing of this transition happens how can technology move from the global north to the global south as well as financing move from global north to global south how can this transition be more inclusive how can it include the MSME sector uh, how can we use uh, technology to make this transition uh, more efficient and how can we embed circularity into our business processes. So our recommendations are more on this. I think uh, different parts of the world are addressing this differently. Uh, in India also, I think by setting uh, aggressive targets for renewable energy, I think we're moving in that direction very well. 
we now need to make uh, make sure that the policy framework supports this transition. We also need to make sure that the infrastructure is built to support this transition. And I think those are the specific uh, conversations with the Indian government. But overall, at a B20 level, I think the Global North and the Global South need to work together more closely. Well, we really hope that the policy implementation gets faster. Uh, thank you, Mr. Thank you. Sir, for joining us. And that was Mr. TV Narendran speaking about how uh, he's co-chaired uh, an important committee as far as the energy sector goes and how uh, the company that he's heading is, is kind of on a billion dollar push for expansion as well. If you like the video, do like, comment, share and subscribe.